Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Steve Hudson, and he is KI3EZ. He says, I've been a longtime fan of your videos and have recommended them to many of my ham friends. Thank you, I appreciate that. That's how this channel grows, strictly by word of mouth. I don't advertise. I am currently attempting to help some new technician class hams with some of the basics. The issue of resonance came up at one of our sessions. I don't feel adequately qualified to address the subject. Which of your videos addresses resonance? Well, it's actually a general class topic. If you go to the general class syllabus, you'll find it in there and you can find the appropriate general class video. Or we'll just cover it here right now. Okay, what's resonance? Resonance is an interesting topic. Uh, it has to do with the natural frequency at which things vibrate. And just about everything has a natural frequency. And the ease with which they vibrate at that natural frequency is called or is measured as the Q of the circuit. Let's take, for example, this tuning fork. This tuning fork is A440. Okay, it's an A, a 440, and that's the number in hertz. So if you hit this, that doesn't... It's real hard to hear, but it vibrates. Uh, normally, you'd be able to touch this on the surface. There, you can kind of hear it. Okay. Oops, I'm hitting that. Okay, it vibrates at that one frequency. This is why soundboards are made of wood. They vibrate nicely. Okay. Anyway, that is something that is resonating. And the frequency at which it resonates is called its natural frequency. Now, it's something to note here. You can make something vibrate at any frequency you want. But the natural frequency at which it resonates is when it gets energy into it from some source, it will vibrate at its natural frequency. This is true for electrical components as well. And the things we are interested in is a capacitor and an inductor. Okay, now, the capacitive reactants, X sub C, equals, um, let's see, it goes down, so it's 1 over 2 pi F C. Okay, the capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi times F side C. You engineers will recognize this as 1 over omega C. But we won't worry about that. We're going to do ham radio here. Now, that is the reactance here. Now, remember that the reactance is out of phase with the circuit. So the voltage is going to be uh, applied here is the reference for everything that happens in here. Now, X sub L equals 2 pi L C. Okay, so you take the, I'm sorry, 2 pi F L. Okay, so here is the inductance. The inductance and the capacitance are inherent quantities of the coil and the capacitor. 
They are intrinsic to it. They're not frequency dependent. A capacitor has, you know, one microfarad capacitance. It always has that. But its capacitive reactance to the circuit, as the frequency goes up, the capacitive reactance comes down. As the frequency goes up on the inductive reactance, uh, the inductive reactance goes up. As frequency goes up, this goes down. As frequency goes up. Now, let's talk about resonance, okay? Because, I'm going to put an R in here, a resistor. Okay, if the capacitance in a circuit, here's your voltage, the capacitance in the circuit will lead the voltage. The inductance will lag the voltage, okay? If, however, the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance are equal, they cancel each other out, okay? And then all you see is the R right there. Okay, so we're, we're going to do a little math here. It's not very hard math. At what frequency? If you have a given capacitor and you have a given inductor, this should be a coil, okay, at what frequency is the natural resonance of the system? Now, you look at that tuning fork, which we had a moment ago, and of course it's lost now. Um, okay, the tuning fork, each one of these is a spring. Okay, so as a spring, it will vibrate back and forth. And then there's mass in here. And those two things work against each other to give you the resonant frequency. Now, so you've got two reactive components in here. Mass is reactive. It's like inductance, it lags. Okay, that's where you get um, moments and things like that. We won't worry about that here. But we want to know at what frequency a, a coil and a capacitor will equal each other and therefore disappear. So uh, what we do is we take x sub c equals 1 over 2 pi. No, we don't get the square root sign yet. Um, uh, frequency times the capacitance, okay. And... It, we want for this capacitive reactance and this inductive reactance to be equal. We're looking for XL equals XC, and we want to know for what frequency that happens. Here is X sub L equals 1 over, I'm sorry, man, I'm bad today, 2 pi FL. And we want to know when these are equal. Well, we can solve that easily enough. We want 1 over 2 pi Fc to equal 2 pi Fl. Okay, so we're going to solve for F in here. So let's get F over here. 1 over 2 pi C equals 2 pi L F squared. Let's just push that over there. Remember they go from the denominator to the numerator. Okay. And then we can move the 2 pi over here, 2 pi L over here, and we get 1 over uh, 4 pi squared. Um, we're moving the L over here in the 2 pi. So we get LC. And that equals F squared. Okay. Now, 
here's a secret for you. We're going to square the frequency. Is there such a thing as a negative frequency? Because a negative frequency, when squared, becomes positive, right? The answer to that question is yes. There is such a thing as negative frequency. Doesn't that just blow your mind? But this has two answers here. And it is, uh, you want to take the square root of 4 pi squared LC uh, 1 over, okay. And so solve that for F, and you're going to get 1 over, and you can unsquare that, and you'll get 2 pi, and then the square root of L and C. And here is your frequency of resonance. When the frequency is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC, that gives you the frequency of resonance. Now, what you can do with this is pick an L and solve for C, or pick a C and solve for L, whatever, or just experiment till you get it right. But the point is that we get that same kind of thing, whereas if you set these reactances equal to each other, you get the resonant frequency. This is the resonant frequency. Now, we took a square root, didn't we? So I'm just going to be a little strange and put a plus and minus in front of that. But uh, anyway, it is plus is what we use in amateur radio. But you will see this show up in spectra. Remember, if we have an audio frequency that looks like this spectrum-wise, and we use amplitude modulation, we get a carrier, and we get the positive sideband, and we get the negative sideband. So this is C, and this, if this is F, this is C plus F, and this is C minus F. See where your negative frequencies come in? Okay, they do come in, but they're there. All right, let's make sure that we have addressed it. There is, if you look in the general training, um, there is a, a video on resonance in there that covers this, plus a bunch of other stuff. But I think I've kind of covered it here. What we did was we know that by definition, okay, you get um, the frequency of resonance is where the inductive uh the inductive reactance equals the capacitive reactance. We solve from that the frequency at which that happens. There is only one frequency at which that happens. Now, if we're talking about a resonant antenna, there, that means, therefore, there is only one frequency at which it is resonant. And you go off the sides of that, and it's either inductive or capacitive. If an antenna is too short, it is capacitive, so you have to add inductance. If the antenna is too long, you have to add capacitance or subtract inductance to uh, get it to where it will resonate. The other corollary of that is that an antenna is only resonant at one point on the band. And I want to show you just one more concept down here. That's called Q. Q is called the quality factor. It's unitless, but it has to do with a resonant circuit. Here's frequency. Here is the response to frequency. At resonance, it's the most. So if you put in the resonant frequency, you will get the most response at the resonance. Now, it will fall off like this. And if you excite it with a frequency that is different from that, you'll get a curve that looks like this. Okay, now for a lower Q, we get wider 
things here. So for our antennas, we don't want them too high Q so that they'll resonate satisfactorily across the whole band. They're not actually resonating across the whole band. They resonate at one frequency, but it's close enough across the rest of the band. If you use something like a small HF loop, so-called mega loop, um, the resonance, uh, the Q can be very high. So if you move it very much at all, it won't respond to the RF you have to retune. Okay, that is plenty for that uh, video. So there you have it. If you would like to help out this channel financially, you may certainly do so by going to decastler.com slash support. And you can look at uh, Patreon in a couple different ways with PayPal. One is recurring, one is one time. If you uh, would like to participate in the monthly giveaway, go to decastler.com slash giveaway. Find out what is being given away this month. You have to send an entry form in the form of a letter or a postcard uh, or something like that. The instructions are all there on what to do. And so until we next meet, 73.